Greetings from Tokyo, my dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope all of you are doing very well today. I would like to take this opportunity to talk about the Criterion Collection releases for 2019. Now, I'm a little bit late to the party, so I apologize, but the first title that I want to talk about is a Blu-ray. This is a Blu-ray of a film that used to be in the Criterion Collection for some years, and then it fell out of print. And then recently, it came back into the Criterion Collection, January 2019. What a lovely release it was. And I have it on Blu-ray. I'm very lucky. Spine number 137. This is the film called Notorious. Forty-six, Notorious, directed by Alfred Hitchcock and with a script by Ben Hecht and starring Ingrid Bergman, Cary Grant, and Claude Rains and others. This is for many people quintessential Hitchcock and it has, I think, a number of elements that come together in a way that is so... Uh, enticing, erotic, charged, very tense, incredibly dynamic, immensely entertaining, and oh boy, what a thrill ride it is. And at the heart of the film is this tense and very, how shall I put it, it's, a, it's an incredibly uh, rich love triangle between the three main characters. Um, and so at the center of this triangle, of course, we have the magnificent, magnificent performance by the one and only Ingrid Bergman. She gives a performance here of her character, Alicia Huberman, which is so deep and it's so, for lack of a better word, it's so layered. It's filled with very uh, detailed and intricate touches in her voice, in her inflection, in the way she carries herself, her face, her demeanor, tiny movements in her body, the way her eyes move ever so slightly to convey so much emotion, the way that she smiles, the way that she carries her body as she walks across a room the way that she registers panic, fear, anger, disgust, and love and passion. It's a wonderful performance. I think with this release, many people are looking at this performance by Ingrid Bergman, quite rightly so, I think, and perhaps proclaiming it to be one of her best, if not her best. And I think I would join that chorus of voices because her performance here is the the essence of this film. I think without her performance, I think the film falls apart because we have to believe that these men, Cary Grant and Claude Rains character, they, these men would really fall in love with her and would really want to, in a way, dominate her and control her, but feel that they can't and therefore therein lies the tension and the threat to essentially their manhoods respectively. Each of course is in his own position. Uh, one is uh, one is a Nazi and another is is working for the American government. So the the poles could not be further apart of course but uh, in terms of politics but in terms of uh, uh, right in terms of a rivalry in love and romance uh, you know we have to believe that they are truly in love with this woman and I think the key to that belief is the focus of their attention namely uh, 
Alicia Huberman. And so therefore, Ingrid Bergman's performance, I think, forms the, 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 the anchor to this film. And then around that is this uh, lush and uh, beautiful and intricate romance thriller that is top-notch. This is a top-notch film. If you haven't seen this film by Alfred Hitchcock, really, what are you waiting for? Uh, there are many Hitchcock films, I think, that are obviously well celebrated. Films like Rear Window, Psycho, uh, Vertigo, uh, and the list goes on. For me, I think Notorious is up there. Notorious has to be up there in, the, in my favorite Hitchcock films. And for good reason, because it has everything that you want in a Hitchcock film. And it has what has to be one of the great MacGuffins in Hitchcock filmography. It has great characters, as I said, Ingrid Bergman, but also Claude Rains and um, uh, Cary Grant. Oh my goodness, Cary Grant, isn't he the coolest? He's suave, he's dangerous, uh, very menacing in some places, um, and very vulnerable. Uh, oh gosh, what a great performance. So, this is a, a wonderful package of a Hitchcock film, and if you haven't seen it, please, I highly urge you to do so. I will talk about this film in detail in a separate video one day, uh, Spine Number 137. So, this is just a brief, brief overview of this film and what it has to offer. So, if you have not seen it, I strongly suggest that you do. This is a magnificent Tense, exciting entertainment. So, with respect to this new Blu ray release, uh, this is a really nice Blu ray release because this is a uh, this is in the 1.37 to 1 aspect ratio. It's described as being 101 minutes and it has a number of special features that weren't included in the prior DVD release, which subsequently fell out of print, which is what I have here. And I'll talk about this in a moment. But let's focus on what's on this particular new Blu-ray release of Notorious. Uh, so let's talk first about the essay. So in Notorious, we have this fold-out booklet, right? And then we have the usual stills, which are very interesting stills. Um, and then we have information about the restoration and about the transfer and about uh, special thanks and acknowledgments and production credits. Uh, the producer is uh, Curtis Tsui and we have the art, art directors Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman and illustrator Greg Ruth, designer Eric Skillman. So, right, we have the cover here which is lovely because it's, you've got the nice font, Notorious, and you've got Carrie, I'm sorry, we've got Claude Rains and Ingrid Bergman in an embrace, which is, this is actually a key part of, of the film. And we have the sing, which Ingrid Bergman is seen holding uh, in her hand, a little key, and it's uh, indicated, or it's, um, it, it seems to be painted white. So this seems to have some kind of significance, who knows, this little key. So you have to watch the film to find out. And indeed, the key motif is repeated on one of the pages of this fold-out uh, booklet. So this is all very nice. And the cover, I think, is, is quite, quite, uh, uh, it's simple. And yet, as I say, they're playing around with some kind of key motif. So that's good. And then when we open up this booklet here, we have a new essay called The Same Hunger by Angelica Jade Bastien. Here we go. And it's here. It's, it's nice and long, but as with most of the Criterion Collection essays, you're getting a really nice, well-written essay that is filled with a lot of information. But what's great about the Criterion essays is that while they are filled with so much information, they aren't so densely packed so as to be uh, unreadable. I think on the contrary, this is a very easy to digest 
essay, and yet it's filled with lots of information and some really keen insights, I must say. The great thing about this essay, among many things, and I suggest you read it, is that it focuses its attention primarily on the Alicia Huberman character, as played by Ingrid Bergman, and it compares her and contrasts her with the ordinary femme fatale character that would have appeared in film noir films that were contemporary to Notorious, so in the mid to late 1940s. So that's a very interesting comparison to make. Uh, Alicia Huberman, you know, I never thought of her as being compared to or contrasted with a kind of femme fatale character, but that kind of analysis brings up a lot of interesting uh, interesting uh, comparisons uh, about her character. That's not to suggest, please don't get me wrong, the essayist is not at all suggesting that Alicia Huberman's character is a femme fatale character. She's just using the comparison as a way to further examine the character of Alicia Huberman. And so this is uh, quite a, a good and pointed comparison, I think. And the the focus on Ingrid Bergman's performance, which is uh, discussed in this essay, is I think one of the reasons why this essay works so well for me. It is so well written, and yet it has a lot of, of, of clear paths to make, and it's really making a statement about Bergman, and really the, the the impact that her performance has. Let me just read an excerpt from the essay just so you can get a flavor of what I'm talking about. So I'm quoting here. Bergman's performance in Notorious is the most transfixing of her Hollywood career before the scandal of her taking up with Roberto Rossellini led her to being denounced on the Senate floor. In Notorious, she's sexy and self-possessed, bruised and bruising. Bergman's face is a beautifully charged terrain, forever subverting the dynamics we've come to expect of the bad girls of the 40s, lips pursed on the edge of promise, eyes drinking in each detail, jaw tightening with fear or anger. But her secret weapon is her voice. If you close your eyes and merely listen to Bergman's voice, you can chart the emotional arc of the film from alcohol-laced melancholic murmurings to champagne-bright sweet nothings whispered into Grant's ear to startled, anxious exclamations to, finally, the trembling aria of the closing moments of the film. Yes, yes, this... Man, this is so well said. This is so well said. Uh, this essay is great. The same hunker. So, yes, this is the essay that accompanies the new Blu-ray release of the film, Notorious. Then we have the special features which accompany this release. So let me just talk about those very briefly. So first we have, this is a new 4K digital restoration and with uncompressed monaural soundtrack. And I think it looks very lovely. Then we have two commentary tracks. Now, these were commentary tracks that appeared in the earlier DVD release, so they aren't new to this particular Blu-ray release, but they're really good. So one is from historian Rudy Belmer, and another is from scholar Marion Keane. Now, Rudy Belmer's earlier commentary track, I would say, goes into production history detail and the like. Very interesting, very rich, filled with detail. I highly recommend it. The other uh, commentary track by uh, Hitchcock, Hitchcock expert Marion Keane goes, I think, into some uh, production details as well, but also goes into the mise-en-scene, talking about the framing of certain shots as they appear, talking about uh, movement of character, how Hitchcock was using the camera, and things like this, which help to further explain and enrich our viewing of Hitchcock as a master filmmaker. So I think those two commentaries are wonderfully contrasting and I love how the Blu-ray contains both these commentaries. So it's a nice carryover from the earlier DVD release. Very nice. Then we have a new interview with the Hitchcock biographer uh, Donald Spoto. So this is a an interview with this um, with the biographer 
and he's written a number of books on Hitchcock. So uh, he talks about Notorious specifically. So it's a very interesting interview. Next we have a new program about the film's visual style with cinematographer John Bailey. So John Bailey is a cinematographer who is not directly associated with the production of this film Notorious, but he is speaking as an expert cinematographer and also as an appreciator of the film Notorious. And John Bailey, of course, is cinematographer to uh, a number of films, I think, uh, that appear in the Criterion Collection. Uh, for example, the film Mishima. A life in four chapters so he has a very good <laughs> eye for cinematography obviously and so to hear his insights is very interesting next is a new scene analysis by film scholar David Boardwell this is a very great supplement because David Boardwell gives a very rich yet again so easy to understand explanation of certain aspects of the mise-en-scene uh, that is at play here in Hitchcock's Notorious. And Bordwell is, I don't know if those of you who are film studies students or have studied film studies will probably know this, but David Bordwell is a, is a giant in film studies. You know, I, when I took my film studies course, uh, film Studies 101, Intro to Film Studies. The, the text that we used was uh, you know, David Wardwell text. So uh, this is a great thing to, to see David Wardwell in action, so to speak. And his discussion is very lively and very, uh, uh, I would say, very educational. And then we have a 2009 documentary, which wasn't made exclusively for the Criterion Collection, I think, but it was... Uh, made, I think, uh, it, well, it's called Once Upon a Time Notorious, and it's about an hour. And this, too, is a feature that wasn't uh, appearing on this earlier DVD release. But it's a documentary that is, I think, I think essential, essential viewing for uh, those of us who are interested in Notorious. Of course, you should watch the, the documentary after you've seen Notorious, of course, but the documentary, Once Upon a Time Notorious, provides the necessary historical background, the, uh, the, the sort of his the, the issues regarding World War II and post-World War II that occupied Hitchcock's mind and consciousness, and this notion of how that carries over into the post-war flavor of the plot of Notorious, obviously. So that is very important, and it lays the foundational groundwork for the um, historical context uh, in which this film is being made, and that is incredibly important. There are also, of course, uh, anecdotes and stories about uh, the making of the film and certain aspects of filmmaking. I should point out that there are two great things in this documentary among many things but there are two great things I don't want to I don't want to go into too much detail lest I spoil it you should watch the documentary for yourself but there's one story or one comment made by the Hitchcock expert Bill Crone and he gives a comment about a certain scene in the film Notorious the scene is the one on the airplane early in the film where uh, Devlin and Alicia Huberman are going into Rio and they are just flying over the city and they're uh, Alicia's looking out uh, at over the um, uh, looking out through the airplane window over the city and she's her body and, and her face is, is such that she is right in front of Cary Grant and Cary Grant turns and then he looks at her and then the 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 scene fades out remember that so that's an indication of Cary Grant falling in love with Ingrid Bergman it's a perfectly timed moment well Bill Crone makes the comment which is incredibly fascinating because he, he explains how, on the one hand, Hitchcock was very meticulous, or at least he was famous for being very, very meticulous in terms of his pre-planning, pre-production. Everything was on paper, everything was planned to the very detail. And Hitchcock would uh, very rarely, if ever, do any kind of improvisation 
or any kind of uh, deviation from the, the written plan when he went into actual production. But it seems like, according to Bill Crone's comments, that that scene on the airplane where Cary Grant looks at the face of Ingrid Bergman seems to have been something of a deviation from what had originally been planned. So if that's the case, that's really fascinating. And it's something I didn't know. So you should watch that part of the documentary, Once Upon a Time in Notor uh, Once Upon a Time Notorious, Bill Crone's discussion of that particular scene. He explains it much better than I do. The other great story that appears in that documentary is a story given by Hitchcock's granddaughter. And it's a story about the, the Unica key, the key, which is featured here, and what happens to that key. And uh, there's a story that she gives with, with respect to a certain American Film Institute tribute to Alfred Hitchcock that was given uh, in the 70s. Uh, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, soon after that tribute, Alfred Hitchcock passed away. But uh, Ingrid Bergman was kind of the, the master of ceremonies, so to speak. And she had a wonderful story about the Unica key, the key from Notorious. And so there is a little bit of a, a, um, uh, a an informational background about that. And there's actually a clip from the AFI tribute that's also included there. So that's a wonderful story. And it has, this documentary has a little bit of a nice epilogue or coda to that story, which <laughs> makes it very interesting indeed. So I urge you to watch this documentary, Once Upon a Time Notorious. It is fantastic. And then there is a, another supplement called uh, What's well, About Hitchcock Storyboarding and Pre-Visualization Process by filmmaker Daniel Rame. And so this is nice because it goes into detail about storyboarding and, and the, the production process, the pre-production process. So um, specifically about Notorious, but also about the process in general. So very, very um, uh, informative. Then there is a newsreel footage from 1948 of, of Ingrid Bergman and Hitchcock, and actually this is carried over from the DVD. The DVD had the same newsreel footage. Then there is the Lux Radio Theater adaptation of Notorious from 1940, is it 1948, starring Bergman and Joseph Cotton, and this is also carried over from the earlier DVD release. Then there are trailers, and the same trailers that appear here also appeared in the earlier DVD release. So we have a mixture of features that were carried over from the earlier DVD release and also new supplements that appear exclusively on the new Criterion release. So this is great. Incidentally, I should say that the film is described as being 101 minutes on the back of the Blu-ray, whereas here on the DVD, it's described as being 102 minutes. The aspect ratio for the Blu-ray is 1.37 to one whereas the aspect ratio for the older DVD is 1.33 to 1. Just now returning to the older DVD for a second. Now, as I said, the newer Blu-ray had the great essay. The old DVD had an older essay by William Rothman, and it was written here in this fold-out leaflet, booklet, that comes with the older DVD. And it, it's a different essay, of course, and it has a different focus. And I would say that this essay is also very easy to read, very lucid, very sharp, very filled with great information. It also talks about the film in the context of Hitchcock's filmography, and in particular the filmography that was uh, contemporary to the time of Notorious, so around the 1940s, and also talks briefly about the film in the context of history. So I think this is a really nice, well-rounded introduction to the essay, uh, to the film Notorious, uh, which I think is given fuller treatment in the great documentary that appears in the Blu-ray, Once Upon a Time Notorious. But that's not to take away anything from the, the merits of the the great essay from uh, Mr. Rothman that appears in the earlier DVD uh, leaflet, booklet. Then we have, let's see, this is described as being a, a digital film and sound restoration. Uh, so uh, yes, but this is contemporary to the time, which is 2001 that this was released. And there is the, the same two commentary tracks by Rudy Belmer and Marion Keene that appear later in the Blu-ray release. And then, then we have the Lux Radio 
uh, program with Joseph Cotton and Ingrid Bergman, which also is carried over to the new Blu-ray. And then we have the trailers. All the trailers are also carried over. But, oh, and also we have the newsreel footage of Bergman and Hitchcock, which is also carried over. But there are some supplements that are not carried over to the Blu-ray. So let me talk about those really quickly. So first there is a um, a section with uh, production stills, publicity stills, and uh, rear production photos combined with the actual scenes from the film. And this is presented in a kind of slideshow manner. So this feature is included in what's known as the dossier section of the DVD menu. This unfortunately isn't carried over, so you're not getting all of these photos. This kind of feature unfortunately is very rare in new Blu-ray releases, but it's usually a remnant or a carryover from the earlier, um, uh, the earlier uh, uh, Laserdisc. So the Laserdiscs usually came a little bit earlier and then these DVDs came in the late 90s, early 2000s, and then they sometimes carried over some or all of the Laserdisc supplements. And in fact, let me see if I can pull out the... Yes, here it is. Yes. This is the older... This is the older... Um, there you go. This is the older uh, Laserdisc of Notorious. This is Laserdisc by number 100 for your information. And this has the production photos and the uh, rear projection, uh, uh, what do you call it, slideshow presentation um, supplement. It also has the radio, Lux Radio Theater production, um, the radio play, and also the theatrical trailer, and then the clips. And also, this has the audio commentary only by Rudy Belmer. So, um, there you go. That's, there you go. And then there's the back. Really lovely. This is CAV, of course. But th my point is that the DVD sort of carries over that slideshow presentation of the photos in the nice dossier section of the DVD menu. But unfortunately, that supplement itself is not carried over into the current Blu-ray release, which is a shame. Next, we have production correspondence. So the production correspondence is the kind of facsimile or copies of, of memos and letters that were sent between uh, people in the production. So this is also very interesting from a uh, production background point of view. And then it's also presented in the slideshow presentation manner. Unfortunately, this is not carried over into the Blu-ray. So. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get that. I'm not sure if it's essential information, but if you're in love with the film Notorious, I would say having this disc is perhaps uh, very important to do because it does have this information, these very detailed uh, production background information. So uh, it's highly recommended that you get both versions, um, only if you're a huge fan of Notorious. Um, and then this DVD release also has something that hasn't been carried over, which is a discussion of deleted scenes and also a discussion of alternate endings. Now, I should be very clear. There are no deleted scenes per se that are included here, and there are no shot alternate endings that are included here. No, no. What's included here are descriptions or uh, copies of the script of those deleted scenes. There were never, sh there's no shot footage that's included. All we have are the descriptions of the deleted scenes or the script of the deleted scene. And the presentation is such that we have the deleted scene description or the script excerpt cushioned by the actual scenes from the film. In other words, we have the film, let's say one scene from a film and then it cuts to another scene in the film. And then we have that actual, uh, the shots played out. But then in the middle, where the, the uh, deleted scene would have gone, we have a description or we have the written script copy that appears. So we can get the feel of or the flow of what the deleted scene could have contributed to the overall feel and flow of the film based on the juxtaposition uh, with the scenes that remained intact in the final cut. So this is a very interesting way of presenting deleted scenes, but unfortunately this has not been carried over into the Blu-ray, at least as far as I can, I can tell. There's also a discussion of the 
alternate endings. And again, they aren't clips of alternate endings that were shot. No, these are just written out discussions and descriptions of what alternate endings had been considered. So this is a very fascinating look at what was being planned. And some of the endings, I must admit, are quite different than the ending that ends up being with this film. So I would dare say this information is very interesting. Again, it doesn't carry over into this new Blu-ray, unfortunately. Although I should say that there is a discussion, a very brief discussion in the documentary Once Upon a Time Notorious that's included on the new Blu-ray about the ending and about its... Well, I don't want to say too much, but uh, there is a discussion. But I think the descriptions of the alternate endings as they appear in the older DVD release tends to be, for my money anyway, a little bit more of a fuller discussion and it gives you a better idea of what those endings were. So uh, again, that's lost in this new Blu-ray, which is unfortunate. And then there is an isolated music and effects track. And then there is also a... Um, there's also a, a, a short visual kind of essay, which is also given by Marion Keene, and it's talking about the Unica key. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier about the Unica key, you remember? Uh, in the older DVD, there's actually a shorter supplement. It's like a, a, a little discrept, uh, audio discussion by Marion Keene about what happened to the Unica key. And it's a very interesting discussion. It's essentially the same contents as the discussion about the Unica key as it appears in the new Blu-rays documentary, Once Upon a Time in Notorious. Both discussions, I think, are fine. And uh, Marion Keene does a wonderful job in Notorious um, in the older DVD. However, I would dare say that the new Blu-rays, Once Upon a Time in Notorious, I think handles that story uh, a little bit better because it also includes the AFI tribute footage and also has a little coda to that story, which the discussion as included in the older DVD release did not. So um, you're still getting the essence of the story in either release, so don't get me wrong. They're both fine discussions of that story of the Unica key. But uh, in any event, that supplement by Marion Keene is not carried over into this new Blu-ray, but I think the documentary, Once Upon a Time Notorious, uh, serves that story well, uh, so we don't necessarily need that uh, to be carried over. Excuse me, sorry about this. After I finished making the video, I realized that I forgot to mention one other thing about the DVD and one of the features that it has that was not carried over into the Blu-ray, unfortunately. And it's this. The DVD also includes an excerpt from the short story, The Song of the Dragon, which is considered to be the source material of the film Notorious. So this is also presented in a kind of slideshow presentation. I believe it was also appearing on the earlier Laserdisc from the Criterion Collection. Unfortunately, this excerpt, as far as I can tell, does not appear in the new Blu-ray. So that's yet another supplement that you're not getting carried over uh, from the earlier DVD release. And I think it's a pretty interesting read because, again, it's always fascinating to see what the source material was for uh, any Hitchcock film, let alone a Hitchcock film that is so celebrated and is so marvelous as notorious. So, so this is my quick discussion of the new Blu-ray of Notorious as compared to the older DVD and in certain respects the even older Criterion Laserdisc. So in any event I would strongly suggest that you get this film if you haven't seen it. It is one of the great Hitchcock films. It's one of my favorite Hitchcock films. It is so fun. It is so magical and vibrant and menacing and suspenseful and so entertaining. It is so entertaining. And so I would strongly recommend it. You don't have to get the DVD, although you can. Um, the older DVD is, as I said, it was out of print, but I don't think it's that difficult to get. And I don't think you have to pay so much money, relatively speaking, to get the older DVD. Especially now we have the, the Blu-ray that, uh, that has reintroduced the film back into the collection. So, who knows? Uh, I think 
The presentation of the new Blu-ray is beautiful, but the presentation of the older DVD I think is very serviceable. It's quite good. The sound is great. The picture quality I think is great. So I think either one is fine in terms of quality of picture. Uh, I would say the Blu-ray probably maybe just uh, beats it a little bit, but that's just my own preference. But I think either one is very serviceable. And as I say, you're getting uh, some supplemental features. Some I think are really good here, and yet others I think are very interesting here. What would I suggest? I would suggest perhaps going with the Blu-ray in terms of the supplements if you're looking for a general overall feel of the background of the film. But if you want some more detailed background, and you want something that has a little bit of a, of a research tool-like aspect to it, especially in the DVD menu, I would say go for the DVD. It's a really nice DVD. And as I say, you can probably get it for a relatively inexpensive price. So if you are really in love with this film Notorious, I would dare say you can get both and they would be very serviceable to you and to your own personal research with respect to this film. And hopefully that could lead to many uh, more avenues for you and your exploration of this lovely, lovely film Notorious. So you can get both, but uh, you know, if you're really in love with the film. And then of course you can also get the, the Laserdisc, uh, which is, again, as I say, very lovely indeed. Um, so. With that in mind, my friends, uh, this has been a quick discussion of spine number 137, Notorious. So uh, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And uh, this is a great film. So again, if you haven't seen it, please, I beg you, uh, give it a try. I know that you will enjoy it. I know that you will be entertained by it. So my friends, Thank you very much for watching. And as always, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Until we meet again, my friends. Cheers.